The ground beneath Boca Chica is shifting again, literally. For months, construction crews and engineers have been racing to erect a second launch pad, one designed to handle the staggering demands of Starship's future. It's not just another slab of concrete. This new site represents SpaceX's attempt to accelerate a program that has already redefined the pace of rocket development. The first sparks of testing have now lit up this new pad, signaling the next stage in SpaceX's relentless march forward. While many expected Starship's growth to slow after its string of test flights, the reality has been the opposite. SpaceX is doubling its launch infrastructure, building redundancy into its operations, and preparing for a cadence unlike anything the industry has ever seen. The fresh testing at Pad 2 hints at far more than simple backup. It points to a strategy meant to carry Starship into a new era of rapid iteration and high-frequency launches possibly much sooner than outsiders thought possible. And with this momentum only building, the real question is how far and how fast SpaceX can push from here. Subscribe now so you don't miss the breakdown of what this new testing means for Starship's future and why it could mark one of the most pivotal shifts in the entire program. In the early days of Starship's testing, all eyes were locked on a single site, Pad A, the original launch mount at Boca Chica. That platform carried the full weight of SpaceX's ambitions, hosting every major milestone from the early static fires to the first explosive test flights. The pad itself became almost as famous as the rockets it launched, a towering steel structure braced to endure the sheer violence of a super-heavy liftoff. But relying on just one pad created obvious risks. Every mishap meant downtime, every upgrade brought delays, and any serious damage threatened to bottleneck the program. SpaceX's push for rapid iteration only made that problem sharper. Starship flights have been happening at a rhythm faster than most expected, and each test has forced upgrades to both the vehicle and the infrastructure supporting it. Pad A was constantly being repaired, reconfigured, or retrofitted to handle new demands. While this single pad was enough for the program's opening chapters, it became clear that the long-term vision required more than one launch site. Scaling up to dozens of flights per year couldn't be done with one pad alone. At the same time, SpaceX's ambitions stretched well beyond Texas. Plans for Starship operations at the Kennedy Space Center have been steadily advancing, with construction underway at Launch Complex 39A and discussions of a fully dedicated Starship site at 39B. These Florida pads are critical for future NASA missions and eventual crewed flights, but they are still a long way from operational readiness. Until those come online, Starbase remains the center of gravity for all major Starship activity. That meant pressure was mounting on Boca Chica to expand its capabilities. Adding to the urgency, each successive test flight has demanded faster turnaround and greater reliability. The gap between flights has been shrinking, and the program is now at a stage where building, testing, and launching new vehicles needs to happen without major pauses. Depending on a single launch pad for that pace is a bottleneck that simply doesn't fit the scale SpaceX is aiming for. To move forward, a solution was necessary to protect the existing infrastructure and to multiply it. And it's here, against this backdrop of growing demand and mounting pressure, that the new developments at Starbase have started to take shape. What SpaceX has just put through its first round of testing signals more than a construction milestone, it hints at the next phase of Starship's journey one that could redefine how quickly the program moves from test flights to full-scale operations. After months of non-stop construction, SpaceX's second orbital launch pad at Starbase has finally entered the testing stage. On September 13th, Pad 2 came alive for the first time, marking a major turning point in the Starship program. Observers near Boca Chica captured the moment SpaceX activated the brand-new flame trench system, which produced a controlled stream of water spraying upward near the massive launch tower. This was the long-awaited debut of Pad 2's Deluge system, an essential component designed to tame the raw violence of a super-heavy liftoff. While the water output looked modest in this first run, it confirmed that the system is fully integrated and moving into active trials. The Deluge system is a feature and a cornerstone of Pad 2's design. For months, crews have been building out an expanded water tank farm to support the enormous cooling and sound suppression demands of Starship launches. 
the trench itself is engineered very differently compared to Pad 1. Instead of relying on a thick water-cooled steel plate, which produces dramatic backflow during ignition, Pad 2 disperses water through a trench and bucket configuration. This new design is meant to redirect exhaust and dampen acoustic shockwaves in a way that can withstand repeated launches. SpaceX deliberately held back full power during this first activation, but stronger tests are expected soon, with road closures already scheduled to support follow-up runs. This trench is more than just a shield for one launch. It's built to endure hundreds. SpaceX learned quickly that simply repairing and reinforcing Pad 1 after every flight would not sustain the program's goals for high-cadence launches. The dual flame bucket design at Pad 2 effectively doubles the system's ability to absorb and redirect energy, providing a far more robust solution. Engineers have been refining this concept since early experiments at the company's Massey test facility, and now it's been scaled up massively for full Starship operations. If the system performs as expected, it will set the template for every future Starship launch pad, including those under construction at Cape Canaveral. Alongside the trench tests, other Pad 2 systems are already being brought online. Gas systems were briefly activated the same weekend, releasing short venting sequences that indicate more powerful operations are imminent. Mechanical hardware has also undergone repeated trials. The gigantic chopstick arms, central to stacking Starship and potentially catching returning boosters, have been cycled through lifting, lowering, opening, and closing maneuvers. Each test ensures that these moving parts are ready to handle the immense stress of live operations. Even the booster quick disconnect arm, responsible for fueling and detaching the rocket safely, has been put through its first activations. Every system is advancing in step, building toward full readiness. All of this preparation has one clear purpose, supporting Starship's next-generation vehicle. SpaceX is preparing to debut the V3 version of Starship, a radically redesigned iteration that Elon Musk has described as nearly a complete rebuild. To match that leap, the infrastructure also had to evolve. Pad 2 is being positioned as the primary launch site for V3 flights, with projections pointing toward a debut before the end of this year if the upcoming test campaign stays on schedule. Current expectations suggest a possible launch in December, provided Flight 11 in October avoids major setbacks. This tight timeline is exactly why SpaceX has rushed to bring Pad 2 into operation now. The choice to make Pad 2 the central hub for V3 is strategic. Unlike its predecessor, V3 will introduce higher thrust levels, heavier payload capacity, and more advanced recovery techniques. That level of performance demands a pad designed to endure even greater forces. Pad 2's flame trench, deluge, and expanded mechanical systems were all conceived with this future in mind. They're not just preparing for one rocket. They're preparing for a new era of rapid high-frequency launches. In this way, Pad 2 isn't simply another launch pad. It's a proof of concept for SpaceX's global Starship network. What makes this especially important is the philosophy behind it. SpaceX has always relied on constant iteration, not just for its rockets, but for the infrastructure that supports them. Pad 1 was groundbreaking, but it was never meant to be the final design. Every test, every repair, and every flight provided lessons that are now embedded into Pad 2's construction. This iterative cycle ensures that each step forward is more refined and more capable than the last. As the V3 vehicles roll out of the Star Factory, their launch platform is already evolving to meet them head-on. In the coming weeks, we can expect the full power of Pad 2's deluge system to be unleashed, the flame trench pushed to its limits, and the remaining critical systems validated through intensive checkouts. Each successful activation will bring the pad closer to operational readiness, aligning perfectly with the rapid pace of vehicle production. Together, this dual march of infrastructure and hardware is what makes the timeline for a V3 launch this year realistic rather than optimistic. Pad 2's first tests are more than a technical milestone. They are the clearest signal yet that SpaceX is moving from the era of prototype flights into a phase of true industrial-scale operations. The world is now watching not just a rocket, 
but the launch site that will make its future possible. Starship V-3 is nearly ready to fly, and with Pad 2 at its side, the countdown to a new generation of spaceflight has already begun.